Hey, this is Sesh. In this video, I'm going to show you how to traverse a graph using an algorithm called breadth first search. Here's a directed graph. We would like to write a program that can explore its topology. And we can do this using what's called a traversal. The objective of a traversal is to navigate the graph so as to know how its vertices are connected to each other, which vertices can be reached from which other vertices, and so on. In the process of a traversal, every vertex and every edge is examined. There are two standard traversal algorithms that are used as building blocks in practical graph applications. Breadth First Search, or BFS, which I'll take up now, and Depth First Search, or DFS, which is covered in a different video. They differ in the way they sequence the choice of vertices and edges to explore the topology of a graph. This video describes the BFS algorithm. In part two, I will show you how to implement the algorithm in Java. The traversal must start at some vertex, doesn't matter which. Suppose we start at vertex A. Next, we can choose to either explore the edge AB or the edge AC. It doesn't matter which edge we get to first. The important thing is that both edges out of A must be examined before we proceed any further into the graph. To keep track of the sequence in which we encounter vertices and edges, as we navigate the graph, I'll number the vertices starting with 0 for the starting vertex A. Then, we need to scan both the edges AB and AC in some order. Say we pick AB first, and then AC, in which case B gets the sequence number 1, and C gets the number 2. To advance further, we need to examine all edges that lead out of B, which is the first of the vertices we got to from A. There is only one edge, BD, out of B, so we'll assign sequence number 3 to D. Now, we need to look at the edges out of C, which is the second of the vertices we got to from A. There is the one edge CD, but D is already seen, so we don't number D again. So now we have advanced all the way to D in the graph, and the next step is to look at the edges out of D. There is a single edge DE, which takes us to E, and to which we assign the sequence number 4. And this finishes up the BFS process. We have gotten to, or visited, every vertex of the graph by navigating from a starting vertex. One way to visualize how BFS works is to imagine ripples in a pond. A stone is dropped at vertex A, which leads to a ripple that sweeps through B and C, then spreads to D, and finally reaches E. The first ripple touches all vertices that are one edge out from A. The second ripple touches all vertices that are two edges out from A, and so forth. The order in which vertices in any ripple are reached does not matter, so here the sequence numbers of B and C could be interchanged and it would still be a proper BFS. But the second ripple can only happen after the first, of course, and the third only after the second. Back when we were looking at the edges out of C, we knew we had already seen D out of B. But how can BFS know this when it is executing as a program? There needs to be some way of marking every vertex as soon as it is seen or visited so that when D is taken up out of B, it is marked, and when BFS then gets to D from C, the marker is recognized, and D is not numbered again. Now keep in mind that the sequence numbers are optional. The BFS algorithm doesn't require them. However, the markers are mandatory because we don't want to visit the same vertex over and over again via different paths. So let's repeat the BFS process, this time marking vertices as they are visited. Start at A. Mark it as visited. Now, when we consider an edge, we want to first check to make sure that its other endpoint is not yet visited. I'll show the check with a question mark. B is not visited, so we visit and mark it. Similarly, we check along the edge AC, find that C is not marked, so we visit and mark it. From the first ripple, we first take up B, check along edge BD, find that D is unmarked, so we visit and mark it. Then we take up C, check along at CD, and find that D is already marked. So we don't visit it again. From the second ripple, we take up D, check along the edge DE, and visit and mark E. Finally, from the third ripple, we take up E, but it does not have any outgoing edges, and we are all done. If we were to output the vertex name when we visit it, the output sequence would be A, B, C, D, and E. 
In the graph, the dark edges show the paths taken to get to these vertices. Let's take another example. The traversal is arbitrarily set to start at A again. There are three edges out of A, and they all need to be examined before we go any further in the graph. But it doesn't matter in which order, so let's arbitrarily check AC first, then AB, and finally AX. None of the vertices C, B, or X has been seen before, so we visit them and mark them. And like before, I'm going to number all the vertices in the order in which they were visited. This finishes up the first ripple. Here is the rest of the process. Remember that vertices in any ripple are taken up in the sequence in which they were numbered. Edges going out of a vertex are examined in arbitrary order. And when an edge is examined and the other endpoint is already marked as visited, that edge is rejected, shown by graying it out. The graphs we have seen in these examples were directed, but BFS can be done on undirected graphs as well, with absolutely no change in the algorithm. The only difference in the process is that since every edge is undirected, it will be considered twice, once from each endpoint. But before we look at how BFS does on this graph, we're going to make some changes. To mix it up a bit, let's start at C this time. Also, let's change the order in which we examine edges going out of a vertex. Specifically, I'm going to assume that neighbors of a vertex are stored in alphabetical order of the labels, meaning the neighbors of A are stored in the order B, then C, and then X. The neighbors of B are stored in the order A, then D, and then E, and so on. Finally, this time around, let's not do sequence numbers. The main purpose of numbering was to know in which order to go through the vertices in a ripple to advance to the next ripple. The sequence numbers were dealt out in first-come, first-served fashion. So, for instance, starting at C, if neighbors A, D, and X are visited in that sequence, then for the next phase, A will be taken up first, then D, and finally X. The first-come, first-served mechanism can be enforced using a queue instead of numbers which is exactly what the BFS algorithm does. All right, so here goes. The queue is initially empty. C is picked as a starting vertex. It is visited, marked, and added to the queue. The BFS process then goes into a loop, picking vertices from the queue one at a time until the queue is empty. C comes off the queue, and its neighbors are visited in the order A, D, and X. As they're visited, they're marked and added to the queue. In the next run through the loop, a comes off the queue, its neighbor B is visited, marked, and added to the queue. A's other neighbors are C and X, but they're both skipped because they're already marked as visited. And so on. Now, let's take another look at the first graph. We started the traversal at A. In a program, the starting vertex would be picked entirely arbitrarily without regard to its place in the graph. So what if we started at C instead? From C, we will reach D and E. However, A and B will not be reached. The traversal is not done until all vertices are reached. So what do we do? Well, we simply start up BFS again at either A or B. These are the unvisited vertices at this point. If we restart at A, we will cover both A and B, and we will be done. But if we restart at B, we won't be able to go any further, which leaves A still unvisited. So we will need to do one more restart at A, which will finally finish up the traversal. Let's repeat on the other director graph. Say we start at C. From C, we can reach D, P, E, and X. Then we'll need to restart at some other vertex. Say we pick B. Both the neighbors of B, D, and E are already visited, so no new vertex is reached. That still leaves out A, so we'll have to restart a third time at A. And after visiting A, we're all done since every vertex has been visited. 
In an undirected graph, restarts will only happen if the graph is disconnected, such as here. If we start at any vertex in the first island, we will only cover the vertices in that island. To get to the other island, we'll need to restart the traversal with some vertex in that island, which will then cover all the vertices there. In fact, you can tell how many islands there are in an undirected graph by the number of times you need to start up BFS on it. So, how long does it take to get BFS done on a graph? We start by establishing what operations will count towards running time. As the traversal progresses through a graph, it really does two things repeatedly. One, it visits a vertex. And two, from a vertex, it checks along every edge to see if that neighbor has been visited or not. So we count each vertex visit and each neighbor check as one unit of time. If the graph has n vertices, the vertex visits would amount to a total of n units. As for the neighbor checks, there's a small variation depending on whether the graph is directed or not. If the graph is directed and has e edges, the neighbor checks would amount to e since each edge contributes one such check. Otherwise, each edge would contribute two checks since the edge would be involved in a check once from each of its endpoints. This gives a total time units of n plus e for a directed graph and n plus 2e for an undirected graph. And they both convert to a running time of big O of n plus e. OK, what we have seen so far is the BFS algorithm and its running time. In the second part video, we will look at the implementation in Java. See you then.